let them skip a good healthy breakfast. So what Dr. Anirudham is doing is really fantastic. I hope we all can follow suit. Uh, moving on, we have our, our own, I'll call, our own Dr. K.P. Anant Padmanabhan, Anant, as he's, we all call him, is, let me put on my glasses, nothing to do with my health, is a lead scientist group leader at Unilever Research and Development in Trumbull, Connecticut, working on personal care research, born and brought up in Vadakancheri, Kerala, Anand received his B.Tech from IIT Mumbai 1974 and Masters 1976 and doctorate 1980 degrees from Columbia University, New York. Prior to joining Unilever, Anand worked at the Surface Chemistry Skills, Skills Center of Union Carbide Corporation in Tarrytown, New York. Anand is an author, editor of a book, and has 20 plus patents and 80 plus publications. He is a recipient of several awards and is widely recognized for his contributions to surfactant, I'm learning a lot of new, new words this morning, surfactant polymer physical chemistry and physiology of skin cleansing. Mm. Thank you very much. The mic is all yours. Boy, that was a long Thank you very much. As you heard, over the last um, 25, uh, almost 30 plus years, I have been associated with the chemical industry in one way or other. First uh, uh, seven years with chemical manufacturing type of you know, a company with Union Carboy, and then the rest of the last 25 plus years with Unilever, which is more of a personal care company. I want to thank uh, Dr. Thomas Averham for giving me the opportunity to come here and tell you about opportunities in these areas. So I was thinking, why should anyone invest in, you know, in personal care area? What are the opportunities there? So what is shown here, for example, this works, is basically, you know, if you look at the personal care area, it has been a growth area over the last 25 years, and it is expected to continue to grow in the next several years as well. And clearly, Asia is one of the major areas where the growth is continuing. So clearly an area for investment. If you look at, really, within the personal care area overall, you can sort of split that into several segments. One is really in the beauty and anti-aging type of areas. Then you've got fitness and exercise, uh, health and well-being, for example, and then you've got preventive health and so on. The rest are much smaller segments. So clearly, this is almost about a 600 plus billion dollar industry. It's really growing as well. And if you look at the, the uh, projected growth for these things, they're also very, very significant. So what are we talking about? Simple personal care itself is about 300 plus billion. Shifting demographics in, in the U.S., it's all you know elderly population versus in India. We are talking about still under 30 and you know, growing into the middle age group. Yeah. Uh, rise of digital consumers, health and wellness awareness. So that is really increasing. That is actually going to drive the market in these places. Yeah. Uh, modernization, rise of value segment. That is very specific for India. You know, the middle class in India is growing like anything. In fact, if you look at the middle class growth, the next projected growth in the next 30 years, that is about 2030. More than 50% of that comes from Asian countries and specifically India. Indian population is supposed to exceed over China over by 2028. So they are talking really on a growth mode in terms of consumers. The yeah. huge opportunity here. And another area is really men's skincare products, which is also becoming a major area. And if you look at the growth in terms of chemical companies, what is expected? In fact, more than half the chemicals are likely to be produced in Asia. And we should certainly have an opportunity for Kerala to get a big share of this in as well. It's a huge opportunity here. And we should certainly look at that as a possibility. So going from 2010 to 2030, we can see how much the growth is going to be there in the, in the chemicals area overall. Yeah. And if you look at the industry itself, there are many, many ways you know, these things can happen. You know, simple things like volume-wise, it's things like surfactants and detergents, then you've got polymers, fragrances. Uh, we talked about biofuels and we have got preservatives, sunscreen, uh, oils. Mike trends are in many, many areas there, and they are all obviously on a very huge growth mode in, in the next few years. Yeah. I want to tell you is that you know we talked about biosourcing as a way. You know, uh, Dr. Gabriel Roy talked about biofuels, and we are talking about you know overall biosourcing as a theme for chemicals, moving away from standard chemical industry. So I'm not suggesting that we should go into conventional chemicals, which is already there in a number of other places, including Gujarat and so on. But the biosourcing of chemicals is a huge opportunity, and this comes from, from very natural sources. That's what I want to talk about. Yeah, it's an opportunity. 
you look at big companies like Unilever, for example, where I work, or if you look at P&G or L'Oreal and some of these big companies over there, most of them are committed to switching to biosourced or naturally sourced type of materials by 2020 and 2030. So it's a huge shift in the way the companies are thinking, where they want to go. So here's a huge opportunity here in terms of uh, shifting from conventional petrol-based chemicals to natural, more green, and better type of you know, uh, chemicals that are not here. So there's a shift here in the big company thinking. That means there's a huge opportunity to drive things in that direction. For example, this is just it's, uh, the front page of the CND News, Chemical and Engineering News. Uh, this month, for example, bio-based chemicals go big. And they're talking about bio-based polymers, for example, that are not here. Huge opportunity, not only you know, in, a, in the US, but all over the world, as chemical companies are looking at everything on, on a global basis, for example. What are we talking about? You talk about algal oil. You know, algal oil is, is a simple way of getting biodiesel, but it is also a source for simply oil. It's also a source for a number of other you know, things that we can talk about, for example. We can talk about starting materials, which are almost like base products of these sort of industries. That are got simply base materials, that's the carbon source, and the algal might, uh, algae can actually convert these things into very specific things. What is different about it is that you, know, you can actually control the chemistry much better to treat that specific chemical area. It's a huge opportunity here, it's not only in biofuels area, but also biochemicals area, for example. There. In fact, you know, we have been really using bio-based, algal oil-based surfactants in our you know, production, for example, now. So it's a huge change from 20 years ago where we were talking about biomaterials, now we are actually seeing that just in uh, practice. Here is another case though. This is, uh, again, you know, making things like uh, green products, custom oil, proteins, peptides, fuels, huge opportunity in all of those, all coming from similar sort of microorganisms converting materials into this. This is another case where we are actually making direct amino acids and amino acid base of atoms and detergents and so on. The possibility here is enormous in terms of being able to control the microorganisms to make. So you have from biorefineries. So instead of having you know, a chemical stack that we were talking about, really producing these materials in a very, very natural way. Huge opportunity here. Bio-based polymers, we are talking about you know, cellulosic. This is again the CND news that we are talking about. Starting with something like plants and how do you get into microcellulose, which can be converted into a variety of products there. These are really getting into the consumer area. The opportunity here is growth. Uh, what I am talking about is really producing the chemicals that can be done by biological materials. That could be a huge opportunity. We talked about the coastal area and where marine land is available for algal production and so on. It is suddenly you know, going beyond simply biodiesels to a number of other opportunities. And obviously, the personal care area is a huge opportunity here around talking about you know, Ayurvedic things that we talked about. Um, clearly, this is the holistic way of really looking at personal care in, in, in a natural way. And here, the opportunities are again tremendous, and we have not exploited this at all. The huge opportunity here as we go forward. And what's the kind of business model are we talking about? You know, clearly, you know, a lot of uh, IPs may be there in some of these cases. In which case, it's a question of actually having some kind of a joint venture type of thing to access this. A clear example, for example, in the case of algal oil, was uh, a lot of uh, the know-how was here in this country. Actually, they have started some collaboration with Brazil and started a company, for example, that which is actually producing some industrial scale. Why can't we do this in Kerala? You know, certainly a possibility there. So there is certainly that type of model exists. Clearly, it can go beyond that. You know, we can certainly go into you know, multinational corporations and interested in investing these things, and we can look at the partnership with them to promote them to spend the money in Kerala, for example. There. And clearly, direct investment, which is much more time involved. Obviously, there's a lot of significant R&D cost involved in that. Yeah. And beyond these things, certainly, you know, health and nutrition, vitamins and so on, as people are becoming more and more health conscious, these are all opportunity areas, the aging performance, obviously certainly about diagnostics as well. These are all areas of, you know, potential growth in the next 20 to 30 years. So with that, I'm going to stop here. There are huge opportunities here that are available if you want to really tap into those things. And Kerala has the potential to do that. The know-how is there. And, you know, if we get the minds together, I'm sure we can make it happen. Thank you.